Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bear Bush Traders Podcast, Talk with Traders. In this episode, we dive into a tough conversation regarding when a trader should hang up their trading career, a very difficult decision that many traders come across. Thor and I are going to cover some of the things you should check off before making that decision and how to do an audit of your current situation to make the best decision possible. Let's dive into episode number five, when to quit trading. Hey guys, welcome back to Bearable Traders Podcast. My name is Carlos Moreta alongside Thor Young as we bring you episode number five, uh, which is going to be a good topic today. My friend, how you been? How's everything? Oh man, I'm absolutely fantastic. I mean, the market's been moving around, plenty of volatility out there for us lately. We've got earnings season going on and you know, a lot's, a lot's hitting right now. So that's, that's really cool. I'm, I'm really stoked to talk about today's topic. Um, as most of you all um, would be aware from last episode, uh, we actually have an email address up there now, which is it's podcast at uh, bearabletraders.com. And we said, if you send a topic in or email us in, you know, if, if, if it kind of, if it's something that really fits the kind of the, the mantra or the theme of the show, we, we'd address it. So today's topic, we're, we're actually going to be doing that. We got an email in from, from one of the membership and they want to talk a little bit about when to stop trading. Um, you know, you know, you know, and, and you, I think you have the email on you, but it was something around like they've been trading for a couple of years now and they're just kind of wondering, is it time to hang up the trading hat, you know, look yeah. at something different or is it time to, to go forward? I mean, that's basically what it said, right? Yeah, that's basically what it is. They've been trading for uh, about two to three years now, uh, two years specifically. And, and, you know, and they've been, they've been, they're coming to the realization that things are still not clicking. And, you know, you start to question, you know, is, is it time to quit trading? And I think that, that's a great email. And uh, and I think many traders, that's so important in their career. They're still trading. Me and you have been doing it for a while now. But I think many times in our career, we came to that point, man, is this mm. really uh, going to work? Should I keep doing this? Am I wasting my time, right? Um, everyone else is in their job, you know, progressing, getting promotions, doing this. And I'm here trying something completely new, out of the box, out of my comfort zone, um, you know, am I wasting my time here? Am I wasting my money? Should I move on to something else? And uh, and it's a tough question. It's a very tough question, especially when we're talking about something that we know is so difficult to do. I mean, trading is extremely difficult. It's got to be top, I want to say top three. There's got to be two more that are more difficult, maybe brain surgery, but it's got to be at least, <laughs> uh, at least top three on the list of oh, difficult sure. things to do, you know? Um, so it's something that, I, you know, it's a very difficult question to answer because only you can make that decision whether it's time to hang it up. And me and Thor are going to give you a couple of things you should look for first. Make sure you checked up a couple of, checked the, off the couple of boxes. And if you have done those and you're still not progressing, you're still not seeing a progress in your trading, then it might be time to think about, okay, what else can I do with my, with my life, my career? What should I switch to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that I think innately makes this subject matter so hard for people, right, is most of us, when we go to start a new job or we go to start a new career or we go to school, you know, there's a curriculum and you sit down and someone says, hey, if, if you take this class, this class, this class, or, you know, and, you know, I, I worked for uh, for Lowe's at one point in time for a little while, you know, it's like, okay, you're going to work in the live nursery department. So you got to, you got to train on this module, this module, this module, and this module. Once you know that, you know, at least now we, we you've, you've, you know, gotten some competency, we'll, we'll take you out here, you're ready to work, you're ready to make money, and then they just start paying you money, boom money yeah, yeah right yeah. but the market has no such system in place right not not only is there not really a curriculum that says hey if you do this 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 and this you become successful once you be once you get there there's no one else who pays you the money right so mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. the only way to really gain success is validated through your profit right and that's that can be very very difficult because in college four years then you get a job right and, and you know oh training three months and then you're in you know technical school, vocational, something like that, nine months. Now you're, now you got a CDL, right? You, you got, you know, everything kind of has this perfectly defined period. And I think that's yeah. what is really the big thing that's difficult is someone says, I've been doing this for about two years to three years, you know, and it's like, but I can't say is that, you know, it, after three years at my competency level, I still had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I yeah. really, I feel like I really hit my stride right around three years. And then, you know, I'm, I'm getting better as I go, but even at five years in now, which, you know, Carlos, you and I are kind of in a similar spot there, 
even at five years now, I still have days where I just go, how did I not know that? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I, like, I mean, yeah. I'm still learning stuff. I'm still a student and I'm still really into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And, and, and again, it's one of this, it's a field, it's a career where it's not like any other, you know, you, you have a bad day in, you know, in your office and, you know, you, you're just not mentally there. You had a fight with your, with your wife or your partner. Um, guess what? At the end of the week, the end of the, you know, your, your paycheck is, is still there. You know, mm -hmm. so at the end of the week, your paycheck is still there. It doesn't affect your income as far as financially. So you could have a couple of, you could have a bad week if you want, right? At your job, you know, with stress and everything going on at home, everything going on with maybe health-wise, mentally, whatever, your check is still there. So you're not affected right. by that. Um, yeah, you might, they might, your boss might call you out and say, hey, listen, I see you a little different today. Is there anything we could do? You can have a conversation. So this yeah. is so you many have a cool times. boss. They might even let it slide. You yeah, know. but say, you know, we'll take a couple of days off, you know, so... There's so many things that, that can that can be done that are not going to be done in trading. You know, if you have a bad, uh, you know, a, uh, a bad trading mindset, it's going to affect the outcome. And that usually that effect that is impactful is financial. And as you know, that is a very important part. As we spoke in the last yeah. episode, you know, um, by the way, over on, on YouTube and also this is available in Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We, on YouTube, we are putting a playlist called um, uh, uh, Bearable Traders Podcast. So you'll be able to catch all these episodes all together. Nice. I know that was something you guys requested on the comments. Um, again, guys, we look at all the comments, as Thor mentioned earlier, podcast at bearabletraders.com. Send us suggestions and emails there. We read uh, each and every one of them. Uh, but getting back to the topic, it's, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to realize, okay, this is not working. I've been doing it for two years, which is not, um, not a small time. Um, and, and that could be very frustrating. You know, I think there's a lot too going into it is, is how much time of these two to three years have you really spent learning to be a trader, right? Like if you had a part time job or even a full time job at the same time, well, you know, two years might not actually be that much time. You know, yeah. you, you might yeah. cumulatively have like only a few months actually worth of continuous, you know, training if you if you really break it down. So I, you know, I, I with a couple of the people I work with, I kind of have this analogy. So since we get to get personal, um, yeah, what yeah. a lot of people don't know about me was I originally went to college for music. Um, I was uh, I was actually a bassoon player. Um, and and oh, uh, hold this second right there. We, we got some videos. <laughs> we got some videos, by the way, of you that we're going to put the links on here if we can. <laughs> oh, <singing. man. laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was that was it. So I'm not much of a singer, but, you know, that was a little singing group that I was, you know, they, I remember that they had yeah, me going around yeah. with. And it was it was pretty cool. But I, I went to college, um, University of South Florida, actually, um, at, you know, for for bassoon. So and, and the 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 reason I equate that is um, for anybody right learning sheet music is actually very, very easy. Like you can sit down at a piano and I can probably teach you how to play like a basic song, like a chopsticks, a hot cross buns, or, you know, you know, you know, the lambs or, you know, any of those songs out there, yeah. probably teach yeah. you any one of those in a few minutes. Right. And on top of that, I can probably teach you to read sheet music just about as fast, right? There's five lines, four spaces, EDBDF and FACE. Boom. We teach those. Sure. Now, how do you get to that point from that point? to being a musical artist, right? And, and, and trading has a lot of similarities to that, which there are technicals. And some of those technicals on the surface seem so simple. It can be very, very frustrating that you're not able to perform better with them, but there's an artistry in the market. And that, like when I was studying to be a musician, can only be obtained through repetition. Significant amounts of time, effort, and practice to not only learn how to read the signals the market's getting, be able to read and anticipate and react to them in a way that allows you to reasonably trade. So for me, like, you know, just going back into that the topic, you know, two to three, you know, years, you know, for you, depending on how much time they're putting in, that actually might not be enough time to develop competency. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's it really kind of depends on that. You got to have a reasonable expectation for the amount of effort you're putting in versus what you're, you know, what you're going to get out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Guys, here's some of the things that you should be looking for to make sure you're checking off um, as you're reviewing yourself and kind of uh, doing like a, a, an audit per se of, OK, should I continue or is this the end of the line? Should I give up trading? I think the first thing is. Make sure you're following all your rules. That is number one thing. Mm. If you if you're to the point where you haven't seen success in a year or two or, or, or maybe two and a half, 
I think you got to get to the point where two things, how are you measuring success, right? What does that measure look like for someone that's been trading for two to three years? Um, it could be financial. It could be also, am I improving as a trader, right? Maybe you're not profitable mm. yet, but are you improving? And what I mean by that, are the issues less and less and further apart? That's a great way to gauge yourself, right? And you can only do this by your journal. The numbers are not going to show you this. Um, are you following all your rules? Have you proven that um, you know you have a successful strategy? You got to check all these things off before you realize, okay, um, I'm doing everything correctly, but it's still I'm not seeing the progress that I want to see. Then that's a good validation. But if you're not, I really like not, that a lot. There's a problem. Yeah, I there. really like that, Carlos, a lot about what you're saying about making sure you're following your rules. I mean, I think the most of the traders that we work with that are struggling, it's almost self-inflicted. You know, yes. because it's 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 you have a system and you've kind of proven that it's working for you, but you just for whatever reason, mostly emotional of some way, you know, you just can't quite execute. Right. And that and that's that's gonna inevitably that's where that saddle time comes in. You know, that's what really helps you out is it's you know, that's what gets you from there to there is being able to actually, you know, see what what do they say? Seeing the cash as a position. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You got your cash out. You pull up a ticker. As soon as you look at that ticker, you need to think, I've got cash on right now, yeah, right? Yeah, is yeah. this something I'm really willing to put my money into right now? If that answer is yes, then you got. Then you just start analyzing, all right? Well, all right. Well, am I a short or am I a long? Well, right now I'm in a selling area, but I'm a long on the order book. No trade, right? You, you got to be able to go through and follow every single one of these rules, A, because it it allows you to track b it allows you to control yourself emotionally if you're not following yeah, yes. your rules then it's your fault if you're following mm -hmm. your rules it's the system's fault right and we've talked about yeah. that i think it was episode two we talked a little bit about that where you know may, the reason why we like to use systems is because the systems are something we can evaluate our performance against without having to internalize that emotional damage right okay yeah, my system yeah. stinks great get a new system Right. You know, figure something out, make changes. But if you're just, you know, just seat of your pants, just clicking away. I mean, not only will you not get I mean, you're never going to survive in the environment because not only can you not track why you're winning or losing any results that you get win or lose won't be re won't be able to be repeated. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean? exactly. So on the systematic side of it, you know, you got to make sure the rules are being followed. So if you said if you're not doing that, then that's a problem. You either have to correct that or. Uh, if you, for some reason, cannot be focused enough to follow these rules, then yeah, this is going to be a problem in this career big time. And and that's something you either address or this might not be for you, which, by the way, is completely OK. We'll talk a little bit about yeah. that towards the end. You know, trading is not for everybody. Uh, the second Back. thing will be the second thing will be is, you know, the pressure that you have. Right. This is a very stressful career. Um, it's a lot of pressure when you're trading and managing your own money and doing all kinds of things. That is very stressful. It's like being an air traffic controller. Not everyone can perform that task, and that's perfectly okay. You know, so if you're finding yourself that the stress level is way too high and it's causing you, um, you know, to uh, to have these um, this anxiety or to constantly be on edge or even uh, allow it to affect you as a person, whether you, you feel happy or not with the mood swings based on how you're doing on trading, you know, that's not healthy. That is not healthy at mm -hmm. all. So um, it, it, even if you become a great trader, right, you're still going to have downsides to, to trading. You're still going to be losing days, red months and so forth. Um, if you find that that the negative is impacting you in a way that's, you know, that's not healthy for you, um, then that's another reason to consider maybe this career is not for me, right? So you got the system, you got the the mental aspect of it that are things you need to make sure are not affecting the way you are responding to trading. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, right, it's, it's. I mean, you should you should like it. You know what I mean? Dare I even mm -hmm. say love it? I mean, it's it, trading's a yeah. pretty cool gig, right? And it's a lot of fun and it's got a lot of complexity and mystery and, you know, lore behind it and all kinds of really cool things you can you can find and sink your teeth into when it comes to the market that's just a lot of fun right but you should really enjoy what you're doing yeah, and if you're yeah. not enjoying what you're doing in any occupation right you should consider alternatives right even if i think um we, you know we always start doing our pre-show and you and i just start talking about topics and then i'm always like i should have recorded that because that was like the best <laughs> yeah, um, yeah but you know e even even you know n you said it um, what, not everything has to be a zero sum game, 
Yes. You know what I mean? Right. There, there's no, there's no reason if you're thinking about not doing this uh, trading, there's no reason you have to do it full time, right? There, you can, you can still mm -hmm. have a love and study the market while you're doing some other gig, right? I was driving Uber um, mm -hmm. when I first started trading, right? To make, you know, to make an extra couple of bucks after I, I had sold my, uh, you know, we had, we had sold our, our house and, and, and moved out here from Tampa Bay area for my daughter's school, um, you know, for her autism school. And, uh, you know, so I, I did that while I was getting into my trading. So we'd have at least a little extra money, um, coming yeah, in. So yeah. there's no reason why you can't take the time and, and, and allow that competency to develop. You know what I mean? It's, and that, if anything, that the most successful traders I often find are the ones that, take that pressure off of themselves to perform and, and just because then you can focus on execution. Okay, I got my bills paid. I want to come down and take three trades today, you know, and I want those three trades to be good. You know, I don't yeah, care if they yeah, win or lose. Solid trades, I just right. want them to be good, solid trades because mm -hmm. I'm not really worried about the money now. Right. Yeah, and that's yeah. and ideally that's the environment you want to be in. You want to be learning in an environment where money is not technically in play. Even if you're playing with real money, you should be playing. You know, it's like any good gambling. Uh, you know, you, you go, you go to Vegas, you know, you, you, you go to the ATM first, right? You don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't go yeah. in with your debit card, <laughs> right? You go to the ATM first because you want to walk in there with a budget. You want to say, this is a, this is my $500 that I can gamble with. If I lose this money, I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. And then if you lose the money, you go, ah, what not a fun day, you know, but it is what it is. Hopefully you got some mm -hmm. free drinks, but mm -hmm. you know, and if you make money, great. But you know, you walk away already knowing what you're doing, but you know, going in while already saying like, that's like going gambling and saying, okay, I got $500 to gamble with. And if I lose this $500, I can't pay my electric bill, <laughs> that's right? Tough. That's going to put a lot a different. Whole, yeah. Yeah. That's a different experience. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, uh, and, exactly. and one's fun and one's not right. And, and so, yeah. and you don't want trading to become that version of gambling for you. Cause you know, there is a gambling esque you know, portion of this, and you know, in, in, in the way you're taking advantage of statistics and, and stuff like that. And, and you just can't put yourself in that position until you're ready. You know, until yeah. once you yeah. know your system works, once you've developed the conviction, once you say, I, I know I can do this every day. Why? Because I can, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I'm, I don't need to argue with anybody. I don't need to prove it to anybody. You know, I, I can do it. I know I can yeah. do it because I do it right then boom you know you are you are ready to trade but until then you're really kind of not and and why force it you know yeah i i, I agree man it's a great point it doesn't have to be all or nothing you know yeah. and a lot of our traders a lot of our actually i know one specific one of our million dollar traders you know mm -hmm. he has a full-time career I, I forget if it's a, a pharmacist physician but he has a full-time yeah. career that he loves you know um he's gonna be in san diego by the way with andrew um, that he loves and he wouldn't he was not going to leave that because that's his passion so he loves that yeah. and he's a million dollar trader part-time so you know this doesn't have to be all or nothing um you yeah. can you know do yeah, other i have stuff, a buddy of mine you know? who's retired who i work yeah. with he still comes out and does a little gig but he wanted to just keep his brain sharp right yeah. so he he wanted to start trading in his retirement you know to kind of help that out and to, you know and, and and to keep himself and and now he's you know i don't even like him anymore because he's retired and he makes more money than I do. <laughs> so it's really not cool yeah. at all. And I'm still waiting for my check uh, for the record. <laughs> my commissions so, yeah, are so, no. So uh, just kidding. So it, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, guys. You can you can really do something else as you continue to trade. And in some cases, that is what it is. Maybe it's not a full time gig for you, right? So there's so many different options for you to look at. Um, I think you get to the point where it's time to quit when when these things are just not being one. The first thing is your system is just it just doesn't work with your personality. Uh, the system yeah. of trading doesn't work with your personality, and that's perfectly okay. Um, we've gotten emails from some members that say, you know what? Um, I just can't do this. It's just not. It's just not something I enjoy. I'm not having fun with it, uh, and I, their personality just doesn't jive with that. And that's perfectly fine. Others, yeah. it's just too too stressful. And usually, that stress comes from the financial pressures to make money and to perform. And if that's too stressful and it's causing issues, you don't want to do that. And and the other one is look for possibly a part time situation. Right. Um, and also give yourself time. Uh, you, we mentioned this earlier, but we want to say it again, because, again, time is a big thing, guys. I mean, you know, if you're if you're cutting yourself short, um, you're going to struggle. This thing takes a while. 
Uh, many of the traders that I've seen that are profitable, that are consistent, are three to five years plus, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that gap of three to five, it depends on how much time they put in, um, right? If they put in a lot of time, yeah, exactly. and, you know, and there's some people that are just, I admit mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but there's some people that are just smarter than others are going to learn better and sure. faster. You know, that's yeah. just part of life. So maybe that happened for them, right? It could take you a little bit longer. So keep that in mind as well. But I think part-time, trading part-time can allow you to wait, you know, three years, you know, to become more profitable or, or five years. Um, but doing it full well, time I mean, could be tough. You got to think about how many like resources you have you read, like, or, you know, I mean, yeah. I've, pro I've read dozens of, of trading books. I've, wa I've watched hundreds of hours of video. I've gone to hundreds of hours worth of webinars and yes, research yes, things. I've yeah. gone to cl classes. I've gone to New York to, to tour the exchange. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I've done like all of these different things in order to, you know, to do that. And like, and, and like I said before, I, I'm five years in and I'm, I'm just really starting to feel good. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like every day, win or lose, I'm not really worried about it. You know, I, I know that what I'm doing is repeatable over the long term. Mm -hmm. I can make money. I'm feeling really confident in that. But I'm telling you, at two years, I mean, I, w I was still recovering, you know, from blowing almost blowing up my second account yeah, at yeah. around two years the difference between two years and three years was a massive difference for me um i think agreed, i think it was about two, it was about two and a half years i finally hit consistent profitability and that was only making like a 100 bucks a day but yeah, it was consistent yeah. and i was doing it and then i and then it took me a while to f improve my my rvr and then finally you know i'd say three years in three and a half years i was making a good daily wage you know and then now i've been doing that for a couple of years now basically since i'm just making good money doing that yeah, consistently yeah. and you know i did that for, you know when i wrote the book I, I i didn't start writing that book till my system had been working for well over a year and i was like all right i'm good you're let's confident do this. on it now this is where right, was, let's move forward, i didn't want right? to look like a chump when i posted it but of course, uh, of, course of course you know <laughs> My friends, I hope you are enjoying this conversation and finding it extremely valuable. I want to take the time to thank you for listening to this podcast. Also remind you that we are releasing a new episode every week. So please subscribe to any platform that you are listening on so you don't miss any future episodes. We also have a podcast at barebootraders.com email address where you can send your comments, ideas, as well as provide us feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Now let's get back to this conversation. If I count the, the times that I... I, I I quit this career, you know, <laughs> they're more than a handful. In my heart. <laughs> <laughs> the time, you know what, this is it, I'm quitting this thing, it's over. And uh, and one of the ones happened when I had my big loss, I had a huge loss, I forget the, the ticker name, I think it's B-I-T-A, B-I-T-A, um, and that was my biggest loss ever, it was $17,000. And I remember that day and I'm like, you know what, this is not gonna work, Yeah. you know? This is not gonna work. So I called my wife and, and man, that was something. I called my wife and I told her, listen, um, I just basically a blew up a Honda, Honda as a very tough call. Oh I just basically blew up a Honda uh, Accord here, Honda Toyota uh, or Toyota car, one of those Corollas. Oh <laughs> I just blew it out the window. And and her response, man, was, by the way, was amazing. And this is going back to, you're going to find episodes about support. And she's yeah. like, as I explained to her, you know, I'm below PDT now. Now I can't trade. I blew up this account. Okay, how much do we need to get back to PDT? And can you do better? And then she actually got me a thing that says, yeah, I don't know if you can, you can't see it from there. It says the best is yet to come. You know, so oh, that, nice. that, that kind of support, man, it's like, dude, yeah. let's go get it, you know? But um, yeah. if I didn't have that support from her, it, it would have been tough. But you're not alone if you're going to this now and you're thinking about quitting, this is not working out. You know, it takes time. It definitely does. Um, and being able to, to do that, it's not easy. Not easy for everyone. I think, you know, not for nothing, if you haven't thought about quitting trading, you probably <laughs> are going to think about it soon. Uh, my point, I, th I think every profitable trader now, I was trying to think of a trader that I had in mind that I know for a fact just started trading and they just, it was like no brainer. Like that's just all they, they all yeah, they've ever yeah. going to do. I think everybody has kind of gone you know, through this, you know, this, this moment where you kind of, you get all hyped at the beginning, you know, it kind of like the TV commercial or something where you're just like hyped and yes. ready, like, oh man, yes. free money that falls out of the sky. And you, and you just get so psyched. And then, and then you, you, you do get to that point to where you learn, okay, it may not be quite so easy. You know, it's kind of like, 
finding out, you know, okay, well, I can go to Vegas and put money in at Vegas and pull the thing and have money come out, which is amazing. But if I want to do that consistently, it's there's a lot I'm going to have to learn to do here. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, you know, and, and here we are with this and it's like, man, you're just trying to like get in here and get this thing figured out and get it learned. But, you know, again, for anyone who's just really thinking about, you know, going out, I don't think you're in the minority here. If anything, I, I think you were in the majority of traders. I think the majority of retail traders at some point in time are, are going to, to deal with, is this what I'm supposed to do? And again, I think yeah. a lot of it comes to that, that lack of time frame, right? Nobody yeah. knows how long it's going to take and nobody can give you that answer, right? Because I, I wouldn't want to give you that answer just because I wouldn't be so bold as to claim that I know you or your predicament well enough to even make an attempt at that answer, right? Yes. But it's like, I, yes. I feel like my growth curve was probably faster than most and mine still took two to three years for me to hit consistent profitability. I just got stinking lucky, man. I am, you know, so, you know, your environment and you know, a lot of those things just, it's amazing how those things can contribute. But I, I got lucky that BBT was looking for a couple people to make some YouTube videos. And I happened to have a little IT experience making some, you know, some, some support style thing yeah, so i started yeah. doing that and and that turned into me developing a relationship with andrew that in turn hooked me up with you and you know we started doing this and then you know now you know what what are what am i at three and a half four years almost now with three three years no, four years with bbt now i think i mean just, I, I just got lucky because then here i am moderating a chat room where people are just asking me questions all day and for for a year or so i i didn't know mo a lot of the answers so i would just say hey ask the question if i don't know it let's find out yeah so we yeah. would we would literally do strategy sessions all day during my mic time where we would just you know oh that's volume let's find out let me grab anna cooling's book right let's let's look let's look this up vpa okay that's a that's an inverted hammer at the top aka you know stopping volume aka tweezers aka fireworks aka you know we, we start <laughs> yeah, going yeah. into all these different terms but after you do that for a couple of years all of a sudden someone can come up to you and not only that i can tell you what book and what page it comes from you know what i mean because we've been putting in the time and that and you know that has been one of the biggest blessings is i was able to find a community that that I was able to be supported by, right? So yeah, you're yeah. you got super lucky. You got the you know I think you I was luckier than you were because you had to hop through a couple communities I think before you found BBT. I just I just stumbled right in because nice. you know we got the book nice. and then the book was a community. So I mean I I actually only belong to BBT. I've I've never been in a different trading community. So if someone asks what do you think of other trading communities, that'll be a really dry subject for me. You'll have to cover that <laughs> yeah, entire one because yeah. uh, yeah. I have no idea. Um, but it, it was just so lucky, um, yeah, to, yeah. to have, to have been able to fall into such a, a talented circle of people and then to have been able to have, you know, absorbed from them. And, and luckily one of my skill sets is absorb. Um, I'm, I'm very good at taking other people's information and, and applying it quickly. Um, and I'm really good at following rules. So you, you put those, you know, you put those two things together and, and trading can be a party sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be, it could be stress-free, which is what you want it to be. Um, and again, but it, to go to your point, look at the time you spent there, right? The time in C, so much time. Uh, you know, and very active time, you know, as you're helping others, also helping yourself, financiers that are going to help you become a better trader. So uh, the time in C is something you really cannot um, downplay. It does take time to do this. And I really think that some some traders just just need to do this part time, you know, and yeah. actually Andrew recommends this too. you know, do this part time. Yeah. Um, and, and that's going to. Well, Andrew you. did. Yeah, Andrew. A great example right there. That's right. Andrew, Andrew did this part time for a while, even after he was um, already profitable, making I think it was about 300 to 500 a day. He was still working full time in his, uh, you know, in his career as a chemical engineer, yeah. I believe if it he is. Lived in Florida, he wouldn't have had to, but he lives in Vancouver, so he had to keep working. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different ball game, business. Vancouver. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so even even he does that, and even now he still promotes that because there was a video he did not so long ago where he talks about, you know, um, it's so it's. Even for him now as a business, as an entrepreneur, you know, he does his trading in the morning. And then once he's done, he goes to run his other, you know, five, six businesses, right? Yeah. So that's also, although he's doing trading full time, he can cover everything. It is kind of part-time trading 
and then the rest of the time he's spending on his business, right? Yeah. Although that part-time trading is creating several full-time uh, incomes, right? <laughs> yeah, well, point. one of the other blessings that we have at BBT is a lot of the Bear Bull traders' money that Andrew, you know, and, and anyone who's inside the circle knows this, that money is going back into BBT. I mean, yeah. the amount of classes, the amount of technology, the, the scanners that are available, I mean, trading terminal, all of those things, you know, that's all his stuff that he's, you know, all a part of, you know, Artie, obviously, yeah, is doing a yeah. lot. So, so you've got all of these different cool aspects and tools and, and you know, <clears throat> all of that's just being generated for the community, which is just so incredible. You know, we've been so lucky to have him kind of as as the captain. So even in the beginning, you know, when he was re he was reinvesting into the community, he, he was keeping a part time job or, you know, almost a full time job doing mm -hmm. that thing. So he could yeah. he could pay his bill bills and then grow his business and you know, at the same time. And what, what a fantastic example. Um, I think that is for everybody in the long run, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's, it's exactly what we're talking about. You want to be consistent. You want to be trading full time in two to three years. Andrew was not trading full time, you know, technically after two to three years, right? It was probably, he was probably five or six years in before he dropped um, the, you know, the, the, his, this, the alternative, you know, and like you said, even now that he's not maybe doing that career, He's got multiple revenue streams, right? Yeah, from yeah. All, from his from his yeah. other various ventures, his you know investment portfolios. He's trading options now because you know yeah. he's a baller, and apparently, options is the new thing. And I know, you know we everyone's super of, excited about options, and and we you have know, a I'm, new rule I'm now too. Pony, so I'm 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 just gonna yeah. kind of stick to what I do, but you know whatever. <laughs> We also have a uh, a new room um from with Jared and Megan. I think it's open three days a right. week. Right in the Monday, morning, Wednesday. And, room. I think Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's an options yeah. room, so definitely check it out, guys. At BearBootTraders .com. you can get more information there. Um, but yeah, guys, go smarter going, people than me. Smarter uh, people than me. Yeah, that is the problem. It, it's that's a whole different level. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, but guys, yeah, important to you know do a, do a very deep dive assessment of your situation. You know and and being honest with yourself is so important. Like, be very critical and honest of yourself. Uh, and, and if you can do that, you know, reach out to someone uh, and, and get that second opinion. Someone you trust. We always talk about having a partner that you can trust. That could be someone from our community. That could be someone in your personal life, a friend, a family member that can give you an honest, unbiased opinion if you need that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have the information. You have all the information to determine what's going on with your trading career. Um, check your system, you know, are you following your rules? It, it, you know, do you need to go part time? Is it affecting your mind and health? You know, is the financial pressure too much? These are things you can kind of mitigate if you trade part time at first, right? Maybe start part time a little bit, have a full time job and release some of these pressure points can help you big time. Um, after you do that step, if you realize, OK, things are not getting better, then you can come to a determination that trading is not for you. And there are so many other things that you can do with your for wonderful sure. life. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, sure. trading is not trading is not the be all and all. If you fail at trading, there's so many other things you can do, guys. Um, you know, I, I will wish you find something that you love. That's important because you know once you find something that you love doing, you know you can do that uh, at a very high level and not feel like you're working right. So you still will get that freedom sensation that you get with trading. Right. So, you know, be be aware if you could find something like that, be aware that trading is not the only thing that kind of uh, can can provide that freedom for you. You know, yeah, I like I like what you said there. I want to piggyback on that just a titch um, as we start to probably wrap this one, I'm sure. But um, if you're looking to evaluate that, right, the first number one criteria, right, is are you following the rules? Yeah. Right. Number two is are the rules working? Right. And number mm -hmm. three is why are they not working? Right. Yeah. And that's it. Right. If you don't know the answer to number three, you need to educate yourself. Right. If you don't if you don't know number three, why number three isn't working, reach out to a mentor, read some books, figure things out, because inevitably one, two, three should be a rinse, wash, repeat kind of scenario. Right. Am I following mm -hmm. the rules? That should always be yes. Right. If that's a no, you don't even need to evaluate the trade. There's no point right. to waste your time going through new highs, new lows, blah, all of that stuff. Waste of time, right? If you're not following what rules you have set in, don't even waste your time because worst case scenario is you're going to actually find a reason in something you did that was wrong that will cause you to modify rules that you're not even testing, right? Yeah, so, good, so, great point. so you, you got to yeah. follow your rules, hands down. Number two, now that you're following your rules, do they work? If, they, if that answer is a no, 
why right and and then and and then rinse wash repeat rinse wash repeat mm -hmm. if you if you do that enough times you're you're going to dial in right but don't what a lot of people do is they 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 don't do the part 3 right they go or or they don't do part, part 1 which is the most people but if they if they follow the rules and then the rules don't work they just kind of keep rinse wash repeating but they never go to the why part right they don't really make yeah. changes they just do the same thing over and over and over again you know hoping this time what I think will work will work. Don't do all that, right? If it's yeah. not working, it's not working. If you're following the rules and the rules aren't working, get some new rules, right? And, you know, yeah. reach yeah. out, mentor, educate, figure some stuff out. Because the other thing that will cause you to lose interest in trading is that stagnation of, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, what, 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 what do they call crazy or whatever, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting Insanity. different results. Yeah. You, you just go crazy. Right. Because you're just sitting here drilling the same technique over and over again and it's not working. And it's like, but if you're not following the rules, you're the reason it's not working. Right. And if you are following the rules and it's not working, well, then don't just keep doing it over and over again. Like try it a few times. If it doesn't work, modify. You know, we got mm -hmm. it's time to move on. But yeah. and I think if you, you can do that and really evaluate it, because ultimately in my final answer on on kind of when you should stop trading is when you don't love it anymore. If you don't, if you don't want to sit down on the desk, if you're not waking up in the morning and you're not saying, man, I can't wait to get up there to see what surprise the market has in store for me today, which there is always a surprise. Yes, um, the market yes, always yes. has some fun present wrapped in a bow for us every single day, good or bad. We don't know what it is, but it's always some fun, cool thing. There are moments in time where I get stuck just watching the tape because I can see that Amazon has this large order and I just want to sit there and watch it melt, right? I just want to mm -hmm. see this order get hit. I want to see the volume come through. It's going to be cathartic, you know, just to see the way the market makers rip through this order. And then I just sit back and I just get to watch. And then, you know, you get into a position and then you just get to sit back and just watch it go through. And it's a yeah. lot of fun, right? Yeah. But if you're yeah. not having fun, if you're, if you're dreading going up to that desk, you're dreading getting your trade on at, at, best take a break reevaluate you know take a couple days off feel really good about yourself and then give it a try then and you know maybe in a different way you know it might not be that thing to do you should like yeah, all yeah. things you, you should be stoked and excited to sit down and learn about this craft and to get into it and if you're not feeling it you're not going to be successful you're definitely not going to force um you know this product through a negative disposition you know, yeah, you, you, yeah. you got to want to do it. I mean, it's, and you got to kind of be having fun on it. No, absolutely. A hundred percent guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this podcast. Uh, remember we, you can reach us at podcast at bearbooktraders.com. So we check out all the emails that are there. If you're posting comments on YouTube, we look at those as well. And uh, we respond to every single one of them. So we will see you in the next episode. We do re release this weekly. So don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you uh, next week.